is NBA 2K22 worth it? No, 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 no. Is NBA 2K22 even worth playing? No, 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 no. Did you even like season three? No, 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 no. Do you even boot up 2K22 anymore? Mm, now we're getting somewhere. What's going on with you guys, man? It is your boy iPod here. And I wanted to actually give y'all my 100% honest opinion about NBA 2K22, the state of the game. It's after the holidays, so all the Christmas noobs are just lovely I, I love to see that you guys are getting next gen consoles by the way but um in all honesty man this video is more than overdue mainly because i wanted to come from a place where i know what it's like playing the video game which is 2k22 so i'm not going to really be on screen that much i just want to talk to you guys real quick before we hop into the video um also if you do enjoy this video or if you have any i guess similar opinions or views about the game definitely hit the like button if you don't feel me whatsoever and you have a different opinion about it go ahead and leave a comment with your opinion um and um tell me how you're enjoying nba 2k22 so far but uh let's get into the video King Kong. King Kong. King Kong. I wanted to start this video from the what's new page inside of my career. I'm probably not going to touch my team at all, mainly because I don't necessarily have to. This is more so about NBA 2K and what they've actually presented to us within season three for, I guess, six weeks, as you guys will put it. Now, if you guys notice the event schedule, they have the Club 2K, they have Rival Day, and they have the Rival Day Championships, right? Now, granted, me making this video, it's only six days left inside of Season 3. And everything that I mentioned to you in this video, if you haven't already started on it or close to finishing, finishing it, you won't be able to get what I have. But if you notice, for the What's New in 2K22... 2k definitely loves to promote when there's new clothing limited drops and things of that nature as well as tournaments that they have inside of 2k and they definitely love to let people know that my team is still an option if you guys want to go in there and pull packs you know what i mean that's that's always something cool right now let's be honest when season three was announced a lot of people were like ah I don't know if I'm going to play season three, but people said, ah, I got to hit legend, right? I got to hit legend. I got to hit it. And then it came out that they were taking all of the double XP tokens from everybody. If you didn't use your double XP tokens before the end of the last season, you weren't going to be able to use them for season three. Now, just to let you guys know, I have XP tokens. I've earned all of these XP tokens from either spinning the wheel or the season challenge, which is season three. Now, as far as season prizes go, I have one badge, two badges, three badges, and four badges. How many? Five. I have five XP token badges that I earned this season, and I earned two from spinning the wheel. All right. Now, a lot of people had a big issue with the level rewards when we actually got our eyes on them. When there was an announcement about a uh, animated ice style bundle, people were in an uproar. A few people, they were happy about the glider. They were they were they were cool with it. They were like, "You know what? I I can do the glider." But when everybody found out that you got an animated ice style bundle suit, it was an uproar. Not only that, season 3 came in and said, "We will be taking away the left right cheese that means everybody who built a 510 or lower even some even 6162s six but anybody who made a 510 or lower height build just to left right behind screens or even a left right in iso were in an uproar and this the funny thing is right as a community we always have a problem with stuff shit just hits the fan that's just the way it is when we got a fucking problem we got a fucking problem 
And 2K decides, okay, you know what? You guys got a fucking problem. This is what we're going to do. We're going to go on Reddit. We're going to go on social media. We're going to listen to a couple content creators. And we're actually going to address the biggest fucking elephant in the room. And that's what they did. They addressed it. And don't you know, as soon as they addressed the shit, it seemed like even more people were in the uproar opposed to people actually being mad about the left, right? So when they fixed stealing, when they fixed the left, right, more people had a problem because they couldn't play their game anymore. So what 2K ended up having to do was they had to just live with it because every time that they retract something that the community says, it goes to show that the community is not on all one accord. And I'm going to be honest with you. I'm one of those people when I'm in a community and I'm just looking at stuff. I, I really do be trolling, but I make tweets and instagram posts and stuff like that because i know i know people gonna be mad at shit because when we had a scoring machine in 2k21 and we told 2k this build is op this build should not be there you want to know what 2k did they did nothing you want to know why because so many people spent so much money on these scoring machine builds that they didn't have time to go through every single account of every person who ever complained and give them all of their VC back, all of the VC that they spent on a character with animations, clothing, all of that. Because guess what? Whenever you buy a bunch of different animations for one build, they don't transfer over to the other because some other builds might have caps on them. So that's why your builds have different things. So they let the whole 2k21 just keep the scoring machine builds but not this year they've nerfed multiple builds because of the metric system because of youtubers like myself because when we make creation videos we are trying to help the community in the best way that we can to play their game with our builds if somebody wants to be a you know a, a paint beast then we'll make a paint beast creation video say hey this is one of the top three paint beast builds on the game bar none and when we make that video guess what 2k does they say hold on they made this with the metric system and they got and they got those attributes with those badges you weren't supposed to be able to do that we're gonna go ahead and make this the uh, imperial system uh <laughs> we're just gonna go ahead and just just nerf that a little bit you know what i mean we're gonna try to try to simplify it better so there's always going to be problems inside the community, right? Now, let's talk about quests for a moment. Quests. Oh, quests. Oh, quests. Oh, quests. I wanted to let you guys know that I completed two crazy quests with two separate builds. The City Slam Challenge. I completed it with my versatile paint beast. The Rec Center Games Challenge which allowed me to get the racing suit, I completed with my versatile paint beast. But for the racing helmet, I had to go and get my two-way stretch glass cleaner to finish that. And guess what? When you come in and you wanna do 3v3 part games, you have to do them with the same build or the games don't count. This is a huge, huge problem inside of 2k very huge this might be the worst idea that they've ever come up with anytime there are any seasonal challenges yes some people do try to take advantage of them with different builds where you might go to the old gym and you get 1000 mvp points and 1500 vc some people might play the old gym challenge with multiple builds just to get the extra 1500 vc in the season level xp but to be honest with you it's not the biggest bang for your buck especially with challenges like this you have to win not play you have to win 100 games for a extra 1500 vc per build no one in their right goddamn mind would ever do this challenge on more than just one build because if you do you're not you're not gonna earn you're not gonna get all those games played on all those different builds counted to one goal no if i play six games on this build and i play 94 other games on another build they all don't count together it'll say 94 out of 100 on the other build and six out of 100 on this one and guess what these three vp three v three part challenges I've already done on another build, right? So guess what? 
I already have the God darn racing helmet. I already have it. I already have it. <laughs> already have it on a different build. But of course, all of our clothes coincide with all of our builds. And that's why I have it. Now, let's back up for a moment, right? When I asked you guys, was season three even worth playing? Was 2K22 even worth playing? playing they have puma mania club 2k all of these different things coming up on the event schedule right but when i say was season three worth playing i mean were the challenges from this season the quests were they enough for you to want to play nba 2k22 now granted me for the racing helmet for the racing suit, for the City Slam Challenge belt, I felt like those items were very dope and that they gave me a reason to play NBA 2K22 so that I could say at the end of it all, hey, I remember in season three when I earned that racing helmet, that racing suit, and that championship belt. You get me? So a lot of other people would say, it ain't no reason to play season three. I could hit legend season four and season five or 2K on that bull crap. I don't feel like playing the game. What's the point of playing the game? You can come at it from whatever angle you want to. You can say paint defense ain't shit. Until paint defense is fixed, I'm not going to play 2K. Blinders is fucking bullshit. Until blinders is addressed, I'm not going to play NBA 2K22. You can say fuck that. This goddamn badge right here. I'm going to show y'all this badge. Because everybody know about this badge. If you don't know about this badge, <laughs> then you goddamn lost. Motherfucking sniper is the worst badge in the game. It makes people that don't know how to play 2K, that don't know their own jump shot timing, it allows them to hit more shots than they should. And I'm not going to play 2K until that badge is addressed. I get it. I fucking get it. But guess what? Shit is never, never going to be perfect. So with all these issues that we have with 2K, we have to ask ourselves, is it worth it? Now, check this out, right? I know what y'all going to say. Y'all going to say, I'll buy you on one. And I'm feeling you right now. But I got something that been pissing me off all season long rec center games challenge from shammy wells for the racing suit this was the biggest issue of season three bar none when you play a rec center game if the team does not quit and you win the game you are given the win towards this goal but if a team quits in whatever quarter, you are not awarded the win towards your goal for this racing suit. Let me explain something to you. Hitting level 40, that it's not hard. You can hit level 40 by getting on the game for about three hours a day, every day of the season. I've been level 40 for almost two weeks now. And it's about six days left. So that's three weeks left. So I, maybe half of the time of the season, I've already hit level 40, right? But a lot of people say, well, don't you got to play a ton of games? Nah, you don't. And I'm going to tell you why. This season, look at my record. Look at the stats. This is my win-loss record. I went to the old gym and played games with randoms. With randoms. These are my seasonal stats. But if you notice, there's a little discrepancy here. I have 145 rec games won this season alone, right? But what they don't tell you is that every time you won a game when the team quit, it never counted. So I had to play 
a extra 45 games won. That means 45 different teams quit until I hit my goal with just this build alone. Because remember, I do play rec with other builds like my point guard, like my two-way finisher, like my two-way slash and playmaker, like my two-way stretch glass. And I have five builds, but it took me an extra 45 wins on top of the 25 losses that I took in order to earn the racing suit. Now, I know you're looking at the city games like, but bro, you played 245 part games and you only needed 100 wins. No, 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 no. With it comes to the city, I played the city slam challenge. I played other my career storylines. I played two V twos and things of that nature and brung other builds to help complement other players. So I didn't get to play all 245 games of wins on my two way stretch glass cleaner. But it just goes to show you guys that man, the grind is real, right? But what a lot of people don't tell you is there are a lot of people that have put up maybe 1000 plus games played on just season three alone. The grinders, the ones that want the 80, 90, even 95 win percentages. Me, I don't care. I have a discord server where I ask a lot of different people to play with me. You know what I mean? And my fans, we, 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 we get together, we play, we have fun and we rock out. But when it comes to that biggest question, is it worth it? I want to know. I want to ask you guys, is it worth it? Because check this out. I have a, I have an outfit on right now. This is my wrestling outfit. I switch it up. I throw on white. I throw on blue. I throw on red elbow pads, wrist tape, ankle tape, knee pads, and different shoes all for this city slam belt. Just so I can have a different vibe for the belt and different outfits for it so that I can use it. Yeah. I could take my shirt off. I could take off the ankle tape, the wrist tape and stuff like that. And the finger tape and just be shirtless and be ready for a wrestling match it's all about what you want as a consumer i feel like we have gotten to a place where people just go with the norm and 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 when love to tear shit down and don't look at it from a standpoint where it's like well damn will i like it because when i seen people walking around with the city slam belt i was like yo that's pretty dope and then when i actually went in and played city slam I said, hold on, 2K might got a fucking W here. A big ass W, you wanna know why? Because it was a mode that they dropped into 2K mid game. This was a, a brand new season. They dropped in a brand new mode with brand new cutscenes with brand new players. That's pretty dope to me. You know what I'm saying? And then look at it like this. Let me go in here and change my appearance real quick. Is it worth it? Is the iced out suit with the racing helmet and your level 40 kicks worth it to you? Like I said, at the end of 2K, when it's all said and done, when 2K22 is over, I can say, yo, I grinded for this. I earned this. I didn't buy it. Um, 2K didn't give it to me. I played for all of this. And I'm happy with the decision I made to play those games because guess what? I had highs, I had lows, I had laughs, I had rage. But when it comes down to it, I had fun grinding for these items. So inside the comment section, I just got one question for you guys. Was it worth playing NBA 2K22 in season three to you? Or are you just on a boycott uh, tour right now where you're saying, you know what? I'm not even going to play 2K until they fix something. And if you are on a boycott, please leave in the comment section what your problem with 2K is so that when I see that comment, I could respond to it and I could send it to 2K. Because every time I have an issue with 2K, I never, ever, out of all the years I've been a content creator, have kept my mouth shut about 2K. It's just for me, I always say to myself, yo, I'm a video gamer. I'm going to end up playing these games regardless. It's just like if I go into RP and I know that 
a car is floating in the air falling through the world or the buildings are marshmallow because a server is trying to work on all of his stuff but i'm in there just the rp and kicking and have fun and chill i know that there's issues but those issues aren't going to hinder the fun that I have as well as make me feel like I need to go straight to social media because I got a problem with somebody's server or something like that. It's the same thing with 2K. We all know that every video game can't be perfect and it has its problems. But what I'm saying to you guys is, is it worth putting all your negative energy into social media or do you not even expel any energy at all or do you play the game? And still let people know, like, yo, no, it's a problem. Hey, you might want to check that. Because when I went to the City Slam Challenge on Northside and I found out that it took 15 fucking minutes to get in a game because something happened with, I guess, the cutscene or the server from 2K or whatever, I sat there on Twitter like, yo, what's going on with Northside? And I immediately got hits back like, nah, bro, that's a, it's a problem. You know what I'm saying? Other people saying, this is why I don't play 2K. Other people saying, hey, just wait through it. It's, it's cool. It's going to work after a little bit. And other people saying, yo, I seen something on Reddit. I did the research. It's, it takes about seven and a half minutes. Uh -huh. It's always a different spectrum and a different response from different people. You know what I'm saying? But I, I just wanted to make this video for y'all to let y'all know, like, yo, I'm not going to be one of them bum ass niggas that complain about the game, but never went through this shit. I just want to let y'all know that I go through the same shit y'all go through as a content creator. Everything that, that I earned this season, I played the same type of games. I went through the same hardships. I had to find out the hard way. Just imagine playing 30 games with a build, then switching over to another build and realizing the clock starts over. Fuck. I went through the same shit as y'all. You know what I'm saying? But I wanted to make this video and earn everything from this season to say, I did it. I finished it. And to me, it was worth it because now I get to sit here in front of y'all and make a video like this with the rewards I got and not be on no bullshit because I earned it. I didn't sit there and say, oh, I'm a boycott 2K. I'm not playing 2K. I, I, I. Nope. I played it, went through the hardships, and now I can tell you guys my point of view and the reasons why I played it and why, the reasons why I haven't played 2K in about four to five days. I hit level 40, got the racing suit, got the racing helmet, got the city slam belt, and I've been on Apex Legends. You feel me? Doing my battle pass over there. You feel me? So... I just, I know that y'all want transparency from 2K and I know that y'all want them to be more vocal about the issues in the game and in their process on how they are going to fix the game. And I'm going to tell you guys right now, as long as I am a content creator, I will keep banging on 2K head and saying, yo, the people want the truth. They don't want surprises. They don't want none of that. They want to know what y'all process is like what y'all got coming up they want a timeline on these things just the funny thing is right i was playing apex the other day and they had a fucking splash screen with an issue that's in the game right now with a skin that uh doesn't allow people to load up or something like that right it's some skin inside that game and and Apex Legends said, nope, we're going to put this on the splash screen. We're going to let everyone know that there's a huge issue with our game right now. We're going to tell them about it so that they stay away from it. Make sure they don't spend any crafting points on it. Make sure they don't spend any Apex coins on that item until we fix it. And that's what 2K has to start doing. They have to be more transparent in a timely fashion because I know, I know that we consume a lot of information on a daily basis and our attention spans are very, very small as well as not even just our attention spans, just our agitation is right there. It's like, bro, you mean to tell me this is, ah, uh, I'm not playing this game no more. It's, it's done. It's up. It's up. It's over. So I know what it's like, y'all. You know what I'm saying? So. I appreciate y'all for listening to me. But listen, all in all, I'm just like y'all. And I thank y'all for listening. If y'all enjoyed the video, like I said, hit the like button. Um, it's probably going to be something popping up on screen with like the next video or a video that you might enjoy. Definitely check those videos out. Subscribe if you're, you're new to the content. Also, 
I do have a new build that I haven't made a creation video for. It's gonna be my season four build that I will be using. So I'll make a video on that. That video will probably be out within like the next two days, right before season four starts. So I thank you guys again. This is your boy iPod signing out. I'll see you next time. Peace.